Getting a student visa is pretty much like not in a tie. Very nice to see someone with a beautifully knot tie on until it is your turn to knot one. While this video is not about the dress code for what to wear to your student visa interview appointment, you're going to be learning the top 10 mistakes that get people's student visa application rejected. Mistakes number six and nine will drive you absolutely bonkers because why should anyone get rejected for this? It's progress o'clock, so let's get started. Starting with the most fundamental one, documentation. When it comes to visas, documentation is everything. Before showing up for your student visa interview appointment, you want to make sure you have filled out all necessary forms and uploaded all required documents. Missing something out at this stage will likely waste your time in the least or jeopardize your chances of getting that visa entirely. Oh yes, you should only submit only valid and genuine documents. Your documentation goes ahead of you just like your first impression upon encountering a visa officer. Mistake number two, first impressions. Smile. You don't have to be extremely joyous or overhyped, but you've got to make a good first impression. Remember our example of tie knotting. You don't necessarily need to have a tie on if you are not comfortable in one. Just make sure you are properly dressed for the occasion. Formal, corporate, business casual should work. Whatever it is you are wearing to that interview, make sure you are at least comfortable in it and it helps complement your presence and the communication skills which is the next point to note mistake number three communication you want to communicate clearly we have learned that the bigger bulk of communication is actually non-verbal so everything from your facial expression your tone of voice your choice of words your body posture your hand gestures everything count while giving answers to the questions you will likely be asked by the visa officer. Again, remember, you don't have to fake or manufacture an accent that is not yours. You are not expected to speak like the people in the country you are going to. You are likely not from there. Of course, that's why you need a visa. Just try to speak clearly and audibly and you'll be good even if you struggle with the language. Which brings us to point number four. Mystic number four, language usage. As an international student traveling to another country to study, whether that is an English speaking, French speaking, Spanish speaking, whatever language speaking, it is expected that you may likely not speak the language as well as the natives do. If the language was your mother tongue, why would you be needing a visa? You're likely not going to need a visa if that was your mother tongue. So there is a level of tolerance afforded to you as an international student. However, because of your profile as a college graduate or a university graduate and someone who is probably going to study for a course or an advanced degree, there's also an expectation of language usage required of yourself so get good with the language listening and speaking especially so you are not all padin padin excuse me i didn't get that i couldn't catch that during your interview which would not just slow down the interview process but would also make you look unprepared leading us to the mistake number five preparation be prepared to do this effectively, no preparation beats mastering your uploaded forms and documents for this application. Nothing beats knowing exactly what you've uploaded previously before showing up for your visa interview. Your ability to recall details of the information you have previously submitted will be of great help here. So go through these as much as you can. Also take note of date. For example, when did you create your proof of fund account? 
when did you graduate from your last degree in terms of the month and the year? When was your admission into this foreign school granted? ETC, get good at the data you have already submitted because it's likely going to be about those anyways. Mystic number six, not knowing your school and the program you're going for. While the visa officer may be meeting you for the first time and don't know you much, they likely have an idea the school you are going to and they would expect that from you as well. So you don't want to be blindsided by this. The visa officer may actually ask you about the name, the history of the school you are going to and also sometimes about the program you are going to study there. So this is the hack for you. Assume and imagine that the visa officer who would be interviewing you is an alumnus or a graduate of the same school you are going to study. What kind of conversations are they likely to have with yourself? They would ask you some interesting things about the school and you don't want to be caught off guard or don't know what to say. So you need to at least know the name of the school, the name of the program, some of the interesting things about both of those and you would be actually saving face because this is a common issue during student visa interviews. Mystic number seven, intention to return home. Whatever your hopes and aspirations are for what you wanna do after completing your program, you should try and prove your intent to return home after your program with every chance you get during the interview. This is one of those uncomfortable questions you are likely going to get asked, but get mentally prepared for it and simply just consider it as part of the drill. Remember to highlight that you've got a family, project and a network of friends who will miss you even as you're planning to travel and you cannot wait to join them again with any slightest chance you get. And to do this really, really well, the secret is to avoid mistake number eight, which is precision. Keep your answers brief. Hyper positivity. The interviewer sees dozens of people in a day, hundreds in a year, and are also trying to catch a fraud. With the volume of people they get to interview regularly, you'll likely not impress them and they're not there to be overly impressed anyways. It's a visa interview for you and maybe a special day, but it's another day's job for them. So just be you. Don't be hyper positive as you may just be sending the wrong signals. Plus, whatever energy you brought along, you want to make sure you are able to sustain that for the entirety of the interview, which leads us to the 10th and the final point. Flexibility. It's very unlikely you're going to know exactly how long your visa interview will take. It could be as fast as three minutes, could be 30 minutes, could be even more. The interviewer may intend to spend just a few minutes with you and then along the way, they may discover something within your application that opens up a series of questions that they want to clarify. Or sometimes one well answered or poorly answered question may lead to a series of other questions. It's often a case by case situation. Whatever the case is in your case, you want to be sure you stay in character the entire time. And you have started with some of the previous mistakes we've mentioned, would you be able to maintain that till the end? Also, remember there's likely to be a queue before it's your turn. So being and remaining flexible would make sure that you don't burn off your energy before it's your turn. And when it's finally your turn, you are able to do what you need to do and remain cool and calm. 
for the entirety of the interview. All right, that's it. These are the top 10 mistakes people make regarding their student visa interview. And since you've enjoyed this so much, you would likely want to watch the top 20 actual questions to expect to be asked during your student visa interview. Parts one and two of those videos will load just in a few seconds because they are the beginning part of this series. Beyond that, it's been your progress mentor, E to the M to the D to the very, very double E. And I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.